Hi, everyone. Tanya Hertz here. We are going to be talking a little bit about inter internet food service intermediaries, also known as IFSIs, IFSIs. And uh, it's important if you're operating a home-based uh, kitchen, home-based cooking business, that you know the basics about what you can and can't do in relation to uh, IFSIs. And uh, there are a lot of restraints against, against um, working with uh, IFSIs as a home-based uh, food business in Opala. And Mikos uh, particularly are not allowed to um, work with IFSIs like DoorDash, Uber Eats, um, things like this. So an internet food service intermediary is defined in the California Retail Food Code under section this section as an entity that provides a platform on its internet site or mobile app through which a microenterprise home kitchen operation may offer food for sale. So internet food service intermediaries are required to obtain a registration from the California Department of Health, Food and Drug Branch prior to advertising or promoting Mikos on their internet website or mobile app. So if they do not have, um, or if they have not obtained that registration from the California Department of Health, they cannot um, work with uh, with Amico. Amico cannot work with them. They're not allowed to, to work with one another. The list right here are all of the allowable registered IFSIs right now in the state of California, and there's not many, um, but there are more being added all the time. So you'll notice things like DoorDash aren't on there, Uber Eats aren't on there, um, uh, some of the other popular uh, home dining apps are not on there. And, uh, and so it's really important that you only work with a registered IFC um, and you can only uh, sell your food through a re registered IFC legally. So an IFC has to clearly state that they're, uh, the fees that they have associated with the amount being charged for the service on its website or mobile app. And uh, a lot of the, the fees like DoorDash or Uber Eats are um, technically to, uh, they, they charge too much. They're, they, um, they're not allowed to, you know, that's one of the reasons that they can't end up working with, uh, with Mikos. Um, they have to have, uh, um, they have to provide a, on its platform, a dedicated location to post their permit number. And they have to conspicuously post how a consumer can re report to the IPSI uh, a food safety complaint um, and with uh, to the IFC itself and with the local food enforcement agency. And so um, that's why uh, uh, another reason of why a lot of the platforms that you, you know about for buying food, selling food, were not allowed to work with Mikos. So the IFC or Miko are not allowed to use the word catering also, or any variation of the word catering in the listing or the publication of, uh, of the Mikos uh, offer for food sale. If you want to know more information about what's allowed and what's not allowed um, when it comes to IFSIs, uh, the Cook Alliance is a good place to go. Um, you can go online and uh, type in MECO and all the time the, the new laws or the laws are changing. Uh, new things are constantly, constantly being added. Um, so most of the, um, if they want to be considered um, allowable to work with Amico, an IFSI um, uh, or an, inter uh, an intermediary food service, no, internet, inter internet food service intermediary. I can't speak. <laughs> they have to follow a marketplace structure rather than an intermediary intermediary structure. So a marketplace structure is where the um, different businesses can collectively sell their products or service to a pre-established customer base. They get their revenue from various types of fees, from advertising, from subscriptions, so from subscriptions and more. Um, they typically uh, don't just charge a straight commission like a lot of these other IFSIs do. Um, and uh, some some common uh, or the most well known um, home home cooking app, uh, Chef and Food Gnome are the two big ones. Chef and Food Food Gnome. Um, here's a, a little bit uh, closer uh, picture of uh, Chef, and you can see how Chef operates. It shows all the different types of food, and you can filter by dietary, uh, spice levels, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, you can see it's many, many, many different kinds of food on one platform. 
uh, and this is a food gnome up close, uh, and you can see the uh, same kind of thing. They have um, examples of, of similar ty types of food in different locations. You can look by map, and you can look in your area. And um, these are allowable, allowable FCs that you're allowed to, to work with rather than um, something that you're not allowed to work with. So again, uh, here's a link. There's a link on here to the, to the website where you can find out um, the requirements, the specific requirements for these uh, registered uh, IFCs, and um, blah, and the list is again right here. This is uh, as of November 2022, the allowable IFCs. Okay, moving forward. So other food service intermediaries um, are, are allowable, and some follow this uh, sort of e-commerce structure that open them up to all different types of food sales, regardless of the type of permit. So they're not just for Mikos, not just for, for cottage food, et cetera, et cetera. Um, <coughs> you do often see these for, excuse me, for cottage food and uh, for Mikos, but uh, there's many different, many different types of um, food being offered. They also derive the revenue from different types of fees, from advertising subscriptions, et cetera. Uh, cast iron is a really good example of, um, of this type of e-commerce uh, intermediary. And so uh, you can uh, take a look on um, cast iron. It's sort of, it's, it's like a platform. Uh, it, it's the platform. And then on, on that platform, the, um, the the different the various uh, types of, of food uh, uh, you know food uh, caterings or uh, sorry I shouldn't say catering not catering uh, food um, sales are are posted so like toasted sugar is an example of one on cast iron so Yogita's Kitchen is on cast iron yeah okay so other food service intermediaries include um, so there's marketplace platforms there's third party delivery platforms and those are the ones that typically are not allowable. Um, e-commerce platforms, management software or POS uh, type systems. And uh, so examples of these would be DoorDash, Uber Eats, Better Cater, uh, which you can tell that's specifically for catering. Cater Now, again, a catering specific one. Grubhub, Foodstorm, Food Gnome, Fuda, Cast Iron, Toast, Chef, Woodspoon. Um, there's so many different things to consider. And this is like one of those constantly evolving um, issues that you, you really need to figure out where you're going to be putting your food and where you're, um, where you can put your food and, and you're not going to be breaking any laws. So the first thing to consider, go to, well, thing to consider legality. Is it legal? Can I, can I put my food on here and not get into any trouble? Because people are watching, they are looking. Um, we heard somebody from De Department of Environmental Health today who was, uh, gave a workshop and he was saying they're out there actually actively looking to make sure that people aren't um, doing illegal things. You also have to consider the fees. Some of these can be really high. 30% commission is not uh, abnormal on some of these sites. So is it, when, when you consider that most, um, you know, food cost is typically about 30% for a successful business um, and there's not much profitability with a 30% food cost and they're charging 30% commission on top of that. Oof, can you be profitable, right? Can you be profitable? That's why it's so important that you have the economics of one unit uh, done for each and every unit of food you're selling. Uh, also, uh, you need to consider things like: Are, are you working in the gig economy? Um, are you are you um, are you taking advantage of your own branding? Are you able to actually uh, share information about your company? Like Cast Iron, you can um, has some some options in there where you can uh, still get your brand name out there. Um, but but uh, you have to be really really careful because as a uh, as a Miko. Uh, under a lot of these Miko laws, you are not allowed to um, you're not allowed to to use a third party platform. You're not allowed to to hire people through the gig economy. They have to work for you, or they have to work um, you know with you. Uh, you can't have somebody else doing the delivery for you. You can't have a platform where these people are doing it for you. So you have to be really, really, really careful uh, if you want to if you want to. Um, follow the law. Uh, Cook Alliance is a good place to go to find out more about the laws. Um, also, you want to think about, keep in mind ta taxes, who's collecting the money, right? If they're collecting the money, um, how much of the taxes are they doing for you? Uh, so one of the benefits of these uh, oftentimes is that they do collect the sales tax for you if um, if there is some or, or um, uh, you know, and, and they are uh, 
providing a lot of services for you. So it's really important that you um, use use the use the platform that's helping you the most. Um, okay, so another way uh, that you can put your business on the map is put your business on the map. Um, make sure that you register your business on Google Maps. Uh, it's really, um, it's not too hard to do. It's a pretty simple, straightforward thing to do uh, to put your Google, uh, the to put your business on Google Maps. But remember, that's the, I mean, search engine optimization, that's that's like as simple as it can be. Google does give primacy to the businesses that are listed on their website. So make sure that your business is on their website. Make sure that you're both on Google Maps and you're also on Google My Business. Both of those are critically important if people are going to find you on Google and people need to find you on Google. So um, we're going to do uh, Google My Business as the deliverable for this week's assignment, and there's instructions on how to do that um, coming up. All right. So um, a couple of things, a few things that you need to know about uh, sales. Uh, remember, all we're talking about here is selling, selling your business, selling yourself. Be honest, know your audience, know how much time you have and get to the point when you're selling. Be prepared, uh, have an outline, rehearse. So if you're selling at a farmer's market, if you're selling at an event, if you're selling um, wherever you're selling, be be prepared and know that you're selling. Um, engage your customer. Uh, don't don't uh, ramble. Um, uh, you It's good to talk about your your products uh, positively. And I mean, a little bit of bragging is expected. Be enthusiastic, but um, at the same time, um, don't be pushy. Um, people like to be able to to see, to smell, um, to hear. So uh, the 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 better um, or the higher, um, well, the, the more visually appealing and striking, uh, the more it appeals to the senses, the better. And um, and uh, engage them if they're not asking questions. That means that maybe something's not necessarily um, going uh, right. Make sure that uh, do as much as you can to reduce your your cost. Uh, schedule your sales interactions. So by by that we mean um, treat treat every treat every interaction with uh, consumers as a potential uh, sales interaction. Um, try to sell things that make you higher that have high, higher profit margins uh, while still being ethical. Um, know your profit margins. Know your Know your um, economics of, of one unit. Know how much each thing costs you to make. Uh, always uh, do everything you can to increase your brand awareness. Remember that uh, anytime you have a chance to say your name in front of people who could potentially be your customers, say your name, show your name, show your uh, sh show your uh, your logo, your slogan, uh, your colors. Get remember it takes a minimum of seven interactions before someone's going to remember you remember your name. So that means seven times you need to make your uh, product or your company logo your company name in front of them in front of them in front of them. That's why you have to constantly uh, be be posting, be promoting, be at different events, be everywhere, be everywhere. Make sure that people see you everywhere. Make sure that your your slogan, your logo, your colors are on everything that you can give out, employee and customer clothing, packaging materials, your signs, your slogans, your uh, any exhibit booth that you have. Make sure that the, the, the tablecloth has your logo on it. Make sure that your vehicle has your logo on it. Any cart you're pushing, any napkins you have, anything that you have, have make sure that your logo, your slogan is on it because that's your branding. That's getting that name in front of them as many times as possible so they remember um you can do it very inexpensive you can put it on stickers which can then go on bags or on napkins or on plates or, or on packaging uh stickers are very 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 inexpensive you can also take advantage of free resources uh things like um the rec innovation lab we have all of this uh, these materials for you to uh to use like our color, uh, you know, our color laser printers and our color um, uh, vinyl laser cutters so that you can print your t-shirts, your, your company shirts, your giveaway shirts, your mugs, your USB chargers, whatever you're making uh, to, to give away and put your name on as uh, many things as possible. Remember, um, uh, it, it's a good idea to give those kind of handouts or giveaways because they're, they're, they're tangible, they're lasting in nature, and um, it gives, and you have that personal interaction with the, uh, with the, the customers. Also, uh, another thing to consider, because we haven't talked about this and we've talked a lot about marketing, but we never didn't talk anything about publicity, which is basically free or little or no cost uh, marketing. So publicity could either be uh, media, working with the media, 
and getting free uh, free advertising through that media, or or maybe doing something like a, a giveaway. Um, maybe you, you're doing a, a charity event where you donate the food, uh, some, something like this. Uh, you need to, as much as possible, leverage publicity so that you can um, so that you can get a, a, a good reach, get your product, get your business in front of as many people as possible for a little amount of money as possible. Um, so it does require regular, consistent contact with news media. Uh, they tend to like Twitter. They also are on um, LinkedIn quite a bit. Um, and uh, you you want to connect with them. Um, it's a really important part, you know, of the whole public relation, the whole marketing. If you have a small business, you need to to get used to the fact that you need to do press releases, press pitches. Um, you can email your press releases or your um, or or you can email to your media contacts regularly uh, when you have, um, you know, you can just do regular emails as part of your as part of your uh, your marketing campaign or anytime you have like a noteworthy event and then um, you email them and then you email them updates. I, there's uh, instructions on how to write a press release, how to take advantage of publicity. It's a, it's a, as an assignment. There's also a template here that you can use. And I actually uh, connected the template um, here for you. And I, I also connected for you, hopefully I'll move that other way. Um, the uh, the press release assignment here with all of all of the press releases I wrote over I think I gave you like like a four or five year period of time where I was just of, of my press releases uh, for the for the rec and um, there's a link to that there and so you can look and see a lot of my press releases are very short uh, to the point and uh, I highly recommend that you uh, write clear short to the point uh, press pre press releases or press announcements and oh, go back to the assignment here and there is a detailed instructions on how to do this including that that template that you can use and we had a workshop the other day with uh and alexander nguyen from uh kpbs who gave a great workshop on writing pre press pitches we also had another great workshop with Juan sanchez and uh, steve quist from kusi and all of them told you how to take advantage of the media to get free uh, marketing so i highly recommend that you do that hope that you guys do that. Um, and then we're going to stop this here. And then we're, final video is going to be on HR, um, the difference between uh, independent contractors and, um, and uh, paid employees. All right. Talk to you soon. See you at that last one.